Okay, I uh, will continue with uh, uh, adrenergic pharmacology. Okay, first we'll discuss about the adrenergic agonist or also known as sympathomimetic drugs. Then after completing that, we'll study about the antagonist, uh, also called sympatholytic drugs. Okay, the basic way or the most easier way of remembering about the adrenergic drugs is to remember these three words. Okay flight fight and fright okay the sympathetic system helps a person it is a protective mechanism okay survival mechanism during flight means uh, during rush during uh, like uh, you're flying for the first time you're doing something new like bungee jumping for the first time okay jumping off a parachute for the first time doing something new okay? that is flight fright means you're afraid right you are afraid of, you see a lion, you are afraid, the sympathetic system will get activated. And fight, when you are ready to fight someone, or when you are there to defend yourself, okay, then this system kicks in. As you already discussed that, uh, the sympathetic outflow is thoracolumbar outflow. What happens is, uh, from the chain, a uh, sympathetic chain at the adjacent side of the vertebra, uh, preganglion is fiber comes acetylcholine is uh, released from there and the postganglionic fiber okay, this is preganglionic fiber this is postganglionic fiber this is the ganglion and on the postganglionic side near the effector organ this one is the effector organ okay not adrenaline is secreted okay and also uh, acetylcholine acts on adrenal medulla secreting epinephrine okay so uh, sympathetic pharmacology it acts uh, the sympathetic system it acts by releasing norepinephrine epinephrine and in case of sweat glands acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter okay okay, okay uh, in the hypothalamus there are two areas okay there are a lot of areas but importantly there are two areas one is ventromedial area and the other one is posterior lateral area okay Remember that the sympathetic control is due to posterior lateral area and the parasympathetic control is due to ventromedial area. Okay, let's suppose you see, you hear a barking dog. Okay, then you see that it's coming towards you. Okay, and you had previously a dog had bitten you. Then what happens is that that recent dog bite memory, that sound clue from the auditory tract tract, and the vision from the visual tract they all go go to the limbic system okay what limbic system does it does is that it stimulates the posterior lateral area okay and inhibits the ventrolateral area means activating the parasympathetic system and inhibiting the sorry activating the sympathetic system and inhibiting the parasympathetic system okay this is how the sympathetic outflow is controlled by hypothalamus in these two areas okay next we'll discuss about the synthesis and release of norepinephrine okay this is a very high yield okay synthesis and release of norepinephrine it is, it is very frequently asked uh, questions are very frequently asked from this okay so norepinephrine it all starts from the diet you take okay protein your diet has protein okay diet it is broken down into amino acid in your gastrointestinal tract okay from there one obtains tyrosine tyrosine also also is an amino acid then what happens is that okay this this tyrosine uh, tyrosine is acted upon by tyrosine hydroxylase then it gets converts converted into dopa okay dopa is dihydroxyphenylalanine okay this dopa gets converted into dopamine okay uh, when the enzyme dopa decarboxylase okay dopa decarboxylase enzyme acts on it okay what happens is that this dopamine is easily destroyed inside the cytosol of a cell by monoamine oxidase enzyme 
ओके सो दिस नीड्स टू बी स्टोर्ड इन वेजिकल फॉर्म ओके सो वेन दिस डोपामिन इज स्टोर्ड इन टू वेजिकल फॉर्म इट इज कॉल्ड वेसिकुलर डोपामिन बीटा ओके देन इट इज कॉल्ड वेसिकुलर डोपामिन बीटा ओके नाउ फ्रॉम दिस वेसिकुलर डोपामिन बीटा नॉर एडिनालिन और नॉर एपिनेफ्रिन इज सिंथेसाइज हाउ वेन द एग्जाम डोपामिन बीटा डी हाइड्रो ऑक्जिल इज ओके डोपामिन बीटा डी hydro oxalase acts on it then it get uh, then this uh, vesicular dopamine beta get converted into norf norepinephrine okay this enzyme uh, dopamine beta dehydroxylase is present on the inner wall of these vesicles okay uh, this is uh, uh, let's suppose this was dopamine this uh, dopamine inside the vesicle here yeah, on the inner wall of the vesicle this enzyme dopamine beta dehydro uh, sorry dopamine beta hydroxylase okay dopamine beta hydroxylase is present and this is not present in the neuron releasing dopamine okay in the dopamine this enzyme is not present because all of the dopamine would get converted into nor adrenaline okay this norepinephrine is then accumulated inside the vesicle inside the vesicle and then whenever necessary it is released okay this nor epinephrine is released okay so the steps are that um uh, from protein amino acid amino acid tyrosine tyrosine is converted into dopa okay uh, dopa this dopa enters the cell enters cell and gets converted into dopamine with the action of enzyme dopamine dehydroxylase then this is in uh, dopamine is stored inside vesicle and then converted into nor adrenaline or nor epinephrine okay now talking about the release of uh, nor uh, release of nor epinephrine from the uh, pre synaptic membrane okay okay let's clear this up mm, so let me draw a membrane pre synaptic membrane okay this is a pre synaptic membrane okay these are vesicles containing nor adrenaline what happens is that when this membrane gets depolarized okay when this membrane gets depolarized what happens is there occurs opening of voltage sensitive calcium channels okay there occurs opening of voltage sensitive calcium channels this uh, opening of this voltage gated calcium channel causes these vesicles to bind to this nor bending okay there are proteins called sy uh, syntaxin and synaptobrevin they fuse together thus fusing this these vesicles to the wall of the nor bending okay then how it looks is okay the suppose this is one vesicle okay this is how it looks okay then uh, from this uh the noradrenaline or norepinephrine comes outside this is known as exocytosis exocytosis okay then uh the tissue specific response depending upon the sub type of receptor that is activated occurs okay this norepinephrine will stimulate various type of types of receptor then uh, that uh, specific action will occur and this uh, vesicle is taken back by a protein called clat C A L A T H E R I N. Forgive me. Ah, uh, it was a bit hard to pronounce. Clarethrin protein. Okay, and this vesicle will be then reused. Okay. Now, lastly, about the termination of action of norepinephrine. Once it get, ah, uh, once, ah, uh, this is released into the junction. Okay, between the presynaptic norepinephrine and the postsynaptic norepinephrine. Okay. Suppose, ah, uh, this norepinephrine is present here. Like this, the it has acted upon the receptors. Receptors. Then how its action is terminated? Okay, number one is, a uh, removal of noradrenaline from the neuroeffector junction, back into the sympathetic nerve ending, via a noradrenaline reuptake transport inhibitor. This, um, uh, the receptor, these receptor release this noradrenaline. Okay, so they release and it is again reuptake. Uh, re. taken back into this presynaptic sympathetic nerve ending 
okay a second is this is our uh, second this one is very important okay this is number one reuptake second one is that in these presynaptic nerve bending there is alpha 2 rece receptors okay uh, synapse and this this is post synaptic okay uh, this alpha 2 receptor what happens is that this nor adrenaline activates these alpha 2 receptors and what they do is they uh, provide negative feedback inside there that please do not release any further noradrenaline okay so this is a negative feedback mechanism okay this is very important and uh, some of the drugs like uh, methyl dopa and clonidine act by using this receptor okay the third is metabolism of norepinephrine by comt catechol o methyl transferase so this is number 2 and Number three is what is eh? number three is mm, catechol or methyl transferase in the synapse. Okay, in this in synaptic area, COMT metabolizes norepinephrine, and if this norepinephrine norepinephrine is present inside, okay, the enzyme monoamine oxidase will metabolize them. Okay, remember if this is present inside vesicle. They are protected but it is if it is present outside okay if it is pulled outside then monoamine oxidase oh sorry monoamine oxidase can act there and destroy it okay so the uh, degraded or uh, metabolic end products are vanillyl mandelic acid metanephrine and nor metanephrines okay uh, next we'll study about the receptor distribution we have already studied receptors in detail in previous videos but we'll just go through them briefly relating to sympathetic system okay okay the receptors the main receptors are alpha beta and d receptors okay uh, common thing among these three receptors is that they all uh, they all are g protein coupled receptors and they regulate the production of intracellular second messengers okay we have already discussed in detail about these second messengers okay so the alpha one it acts by increase increasing the ip3 and inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol dag pathway okay they alter the calcium inside the cell and thus cause their action alpha 2 it uh, acts by increasing the cyclic amp and beta receptor and d receptor they act by decreasing cyclic amp okay we have already discussed about these in previous videos now we'll see uh, uh, action of these individual receptors okay what happens when these receptors are stimulated by norepinephrine okay the first one is alpha 1 receptor okay if alpha 1 receptor if it's it acts on eye okay it causes midriasis okay means dilatation of uh, by contraction of the radial muscles so my okay if it acts on arterioles and veins then it causes vasoconstriction okay vasoconstriction okay artery vein uh, if it acts on artery what it does is it increases arterioles mainly okay total peripheral resistance thus increasing diastolic blood pressure also increasing after load after load and in vein it causes increase in venous return return and increase in preload okay remember these points these points are important okay the third one is uh, it acts on blood bladder mm -hmm. okay let me change the color it acts on the bladder and trigon area and and the sphincter and prostatic urethra okay it causes urinary retention basically remember that it causes urinary retention okay if you remember that flight fright and fight response it will be easier okay means uh, my dress is uh, if a dog is chasing you you need to observe every information about your surrounding okay you need to see far you need to observe uh, absorb as much light as you can okay uh, when you run your uh, your uh, blood pressure start increasing your heart rate will increase okay 
and you don't want your urine to be dribbling out when you're being chased by a dog okay uh, in opposing to uh, opposite to what is being shown in the movies urine does not come out when you're afraid okay and that's why some people cannot uh, urinate in public bathrooms or when they are uh, urinating in a group okay the next is male sex organ okay uh, ejaculation it uh, acts on the vast difference and cause ejaculation the next one is liver okay uh, in liver it causes increase in glycogenolysis okay geno glycogenolysis means it will increase the amount of glucose it will uh, you need energy when you are running away from a dog and uh, uh, in liver it causes increased glycogenolysis and then in kidney it decreases renin release okay so in kidney uh, in kidney decreased renin release okay uh, this was about alpha 1 next we'll discuss about alpha 2 receptors okay so what happens uh, alpha 2 okay in alpha 2 remember alpha 2 receptors are found in the presynaptic nerve terminals in both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve ending in platelets pancreas okay remember three p's mainly remember three p's okay so in presynaptic uh, let me change the color yellow free synaptic what is does we have already discussed that uh, it no uh, it causes negative feedback control on noradrenaline secretion okay that is stimulation of this receptor will decrease noradrenaline secretion so mm, negative feedback it uh, it will cause negative feedback on noradrenaline secretion on platelets platelet will get aggregated together okay platelet aggregation and pancreas yes you guessed it decrease insulin ins insulin secretion okay insulin release is also decreased next is on blood vessels blood vessels it causes constriction okay both the alpha receptors but mainly alpha 1 they cause constriction in the blood vessels next uh, we'll see about the beta 1 receptor okay what happens when noradrenaline or adrenaline the act on beta 1 receptor beta 1 receptor okay first heart the general rule is they stimulate the heart okay they act on the sa node increasing the heart rate that is positive chronotropic effect they act on the av node increasing velocity of conduction that is positive dromotrophy effect uh, remember that the av node it acts like a drum between atria and ventricle okay that that way positive uh, this is chrono uh, this is chronotropy this is dromotropy okay positive dromotropy uh the next one is uh on the myocardium okay on the muscle it increases the force of contraction okay uh increases force of contraction the force of contraction is ionotrophy okay positive ionotrophic effect uh by increasing all this it increases cardiac output and thus oxygen consumption okay if the heart is working more it needs more oxygen okay or uh, by acting on the his purkinje system it increases the automaticity and conduction velocity okay uh, his purkinje system it causes increase automaticity increase conduction velocity okay this was on the heart now on kidney okay beta 1 receptor on kidney okay So let me draw a kidney first. Okay, it will increase renin release. Renin release. Okay, the uh, it is found on the juxta glomerular apparatus JGA. 
of the kidney it will cause increase in renin release remember the alpha receptors they caused decrease in renin release from the kidney next we'll discuss about the beta 2 receptors okay mm, let's see okay beta 2 okay uh, okay beta 2 has a stimulatory and inhibitory effect okay like uh, if it acts on the liver it causes glycogenolysis okay glycogenolysis on acting on skeletal muscle it also causes glycogenolysis and increases the contraction of muscle thus may cause tremor so drug that are beta 2 agonist they can cause tremor okay similar to that and tremor increase contractility limit this is skeletal muscle okay uh, on blood vessel uterus and bronchioles it has inhibitory effect okay if beta 2 receptor is stimulated in the blood vessel okay so these are blood vessels so dilatation Thus, decreasing decreasing total peripheral resistance and decreasing diastolic BP and decreasing afterload. Okay, on blood vessels. Then is uterus. Okay, how do I draw uterus? The cervix. Okay. Okay, let's suppose this is a uterus for a while. It causes uterine relaxation. Okay, so beta two agonists are also used uh, in a termination of premature labor. Okay, then it acts on bronchioles and cause bronchial bronchodilation. So remember, like, the drugs like salbutamol, dorbitaline are beta two uh, receptor agonist, and they cause dilatation of bronchioles. Okay, on acting on pancreas, it causes increased insulin release. Insulin release. Okay, the alpha receptor mainly alpha two receptor acts on pancreas and when uh, uh, when the alpha 2 receptor on the pancreas is stimulated it decreases okay remember alpha 2 decreases both alpha decreases both renin and insulin beta increases both renin and insulin okay uh, the last one is beta 3 okay um, uh, beta 3 receptor beta 3 it is mainly found on adipose tissue and stimulation of this receptor causes lipolysis okay the next one is d1 receptor okay d receptor among that d1 okay the most important one okay this uh, receptor uh, when it's stimulated is mainly found in kidney okay and blood vessels renal blood vessels okay <laughs> it causes stimulation of this by dopamine causes vasodilation in kidney okay so kidney it will the, the renal blood supply will go vasodilation cause increasing blood flow to the kidney blood flow to kidney increases this increases the glomerular filtration rate and also increases the sodium secretion okay sodium secretion is also increased okay. remember that uh, the dopamine on low doses it stimulates the beta 1 receptor and moving uh, further dose okay, it starts with d1 then beta 1 then alpha 1 okay in on increasing dose of dopamine of dopamine okay first it act act on low doses or that is on renal doses these beneficial side effects are seen okay it increases renal perfusion but you as move uh, move forward you increase the dose then alpha 1 is stimulated stimulated causing causing vasoconstriction and thus decreasing the renal blood flow okay uh, last one thing about receptor is that uh, receptor sensitivity okay generally the beta receptors are uh, generally the beta are more sensitive than alpha receptors okay example with drugs that exert both action that can act on both alpha and beta okay the beta responses are dominated at lower doses and as you increase the dose to higher doses the alpha response will do predominate the beta okay but on generally the beta response is more okay but if you increase the dose 
then what happens is the um, alpha will predominate okay next we'll discuss actually about the drug itself okay adrenergic agonists okay now we'll talk about the actual drugs okay the adrenergic agonists or sympathomimetic drugs okay there are basically of two types okay directly acting and indirectly acting this directly acting drug directly stimulate the adrenergic receptors okay these indirectly acting drugs they uh, act by releasing nor adrenaline from adrenergic nerve ending okay and there are uh, the next type is three okay mixed type that is having both of these actions okay we'll see about our uh, individual drugs okay and and in which receptor do they work okay first we'll talk about this directly acting drugs then we'll talk about indirectly acting drugs okay so among the directly acting drugs first we have first we have is a uh, selective alpha alpha 1 agonist selective alpha 1 agonist okay the drug is phenylephrine EPH R I N E okay uh, there is another drug also methoxamine also this phenylephrine okay uh, let's uh, this alpha selective alpha 1 agonist as a whole the systemic action is that they increase the mean blood pressure by vasoconstriction okay increase the mean BP by causing vasoconstriction okay these agents they are used as okay you, uh, they are used as uses one is vasopressors as vasopressors second is nasal decongestant okay uh, let me draw a uh, nose if your nose is congested then you can use drugs like oxymetazoline xylometazoline they will cause vasoconstriction there thus decreasing the edema and decreasing congestion okay uh, in ophthalmology uh, phenylephrine is used as a midriatic mid agent okay it does not got cause cycloplasia unlike atropine homatropine uh, cyclopentolate okay so if you want midriasis but you do not want cycloplasia opt for phenylephrine okay these agents are uh, selective alpha 1 agonist are combined commonly combined with antihistaminics in anti cold preparations okay but remember they can cause hypertension and cns stimulation okay uh, in comparison comparison to uh, locally acting nasal decongestant the rebound congestion is less if you use this phenylephrine okay uh, okay one of the most important thing is that do not combine monoamine sorry monoamine oxidase inhibitors with these alpha 1 receptor agonist okay do not combine okay they increase the risk of hypertensive crisis okay so this was i think all about the selective alpha 1 agonist next we'll discuss about selective alpha 2 now selective alpha 2 agonist okay as i already said this clonidine and alpha methyl dopa okay these uh, receptors are present on the presynaptic nor term no nor banding and they cause negative feedback to the release of noradrenaline okay these agents are used in mild to moderate hypertension okay remember the alpha methyl dopa is used in pregnancy okay in hypertensive conditions of it to control hypertension in pregnancy okay now about selective beta 1 agonist okay. okay remember this is not truly selective but relatively selective okay selectively beta 1 agonist okay it has more beta 1 action than beta 2 okay so the drug is do beta mean okay it is used in cardiogenic shock due to uh, acute mi or congestive cardiac failure or cardiac surgery okay so if you had mi okay 
and congestive cardiac failure and cardiac surgery then they uh, these uh, may cause cardiogenic shock okay then dobutamine is preferred okay it can act on beta 1 beta 2 and alpha 1 receptor okay but the predominant uh, action is on beta 1 receptor so it is a potent ionotropic agent with only slight increase in heart rate okay so potent ionotropic it increases the force of contraction okay that's why it is used in cardiogenic shock cardiogenic shock and it does not alter or increase the heart rate that much okay no only slight increase in heart rate okay and okay it does not significantly affect the total peripheral resistance because it has both alpha 1 and beta 2 action when the alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction the beta 2 mediated vasodilation will contract it okay so the tpr or total peripheral resistant is not much affected by dobutamine okay the next one is selective beta 2 agonists which color should i use for this mm -mm, okay the new, a new color a selective beta 2 agonist okay these are salbutamol terbutaline formiterol uh, salbutamol terbutaline okay uh, the uh, other action of these beta 2 agonists are okay we already discussed that beta 2 has an inhibitory and excitatory action or stimulatory action okay if it acts, if the beta 2 receptor on the bronchus are stimulated, it causes bronchodilation. Similarly, in uterus, especially in pregnant uterus, it causes uterine relaxation. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, let's suppose this is our lungs. Okay, so bronchodilation. Then on uterus, uterine relaxation. Okay. Uh, they cause dilatation of blood vessels supplying skeletal muscles okay they cause dilatation of blood vessels supplying skeletal muscles they also promote hepatic glycogenolysis and they promote potassium entry into the cell okay liver promote glycogenolysis and they want the potassium inside the cell okay thus may cause hypokalemia okay on talking about uterus there are some specific agents that there, there are some selective beta 2 agonist with main action on the uterus okay these are ritodrin and isox suprin okay uh, they are used to suppress the premature labor okay so what are the side effects okay as we already discussed in the uh, when we discussed about the receptors these uh, can cause trauma by stimulating beta 2 receptor of skeletal muscle so uh, let me tremor okay tremor next one is increase heart rate and palpitation palpitation okay even though you are using beta 2 agonist okay remember heart has beta 1 receptor these beta 2 agonists even the selective beta 2 agonist their beta 2 selectivity is not 100 percent okay thus they may stimulate beta 1 receptor on the heart causing tachycardia and palpitations uh, they can cause hyperglycemia in diabetics for if we give them in parenteral form okay or uh, in diabetics generally there is absolute or relative deficiency of insulin okay if you even if you give beta 2 stimulant then it cannot cause insulin release for the beta 2 receptor in the liver causes glycogenolysis thus breaking glycogen into glucose increasing glucose and is and then the last one is hypokalemia hypokalemia by promoting the potassium entry into the cell okay remember these agents are used in a treatment of hypo hyperkalemia also okay next we'll discuss about the drugs that have both alpha and 
beta actions. Okay, we'll discuss about adrenaline. We'll discuss about noradrenaline. Uh, then other drugs. Okay, now we'll discuss about the drugs that act on both alpha and beta receptors. Okay, the first one is adrenaline or epinephrine. Okay, it is mainly secreted by the adrenal medulla. It acts on all receptors, <laughs> all the okay, alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two, and beta three. All alpha and beta receptors. Okay. In low dose, remember, it causes stimulation of beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. And in high dose, it causes stimulation of alpha 1, beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Okay, so let's see the action on heart, that is beta 1 receptors. It increases everything like heart rate, that is positive chronotropy, uh, increases contractility, that is positive ionotropy increases conduction velocity through AV node that is positive dromotropy increases the cardiac output and increases automaticity okay thus increasing the cardiac work and the oxygen requirement okay well uh, on blood vessels okay if the alpha 1 receptor are stimulated okay these the blood vessel in the skin mu skin mucous membrane renal blood vessels mesenteric blood vessels pulmonary and splanchnic these have alpha 1 receptor okay there occurs vasoconstriction if adrenaline acts on them and the blood vessels on skeletal muscle and coronary vessel uh, adrenaline causes vasodilatation through beta 2 receptors okay on respiratory system if alpha 1 is stimulated it causes decrease in secretion and relieves muco mucous congestion and if beta 2 is stimulated it causes bronchodilatation remember the duration of action of adrenaline causing uh, bronchodilation bronchodilatation is very short okay and it also inhibits the release of various chemical mediators from mast cell that may cause bronchoconstriction okay so adrenaline can be used uh, in see, acute severe asthma also okay uh, generally the adrenaline does not cross blood brain barrier in therapeutic doses but at higher doses it can cause headache restlessness and trauma okay the last one is uh, metabolic effects of adrenaline okay uh, metabolic effects on acting okay this is liver and Okay, please bear with me. Okay, that was the worst drawing ever. On acting on skeletal muscle, it causes, uh, it stimulates hepatic and muscular glycogenolysis by acting on beta 2 receptor. Okay, it can also release, uh, by acting on muscle, muscular beta 2 receptor, it can cause a lactic acid release. Okay, something to think about. It also increases gluconeogenesis. Okay, thus increasing the formation of glucose either by gluconeogenesis or glycogenolysis. Okay, it decreases insulin secretion by uh, acting through alpha 2 receptor. Okay, uh, these are the main uh, metabolic effects, but it also mobilizes and uh, uses the fat. Okay, it increases mobilization and use of fat. And it decreases the uptake of glucose by peripheral tissues. Okay, these are the metabolic uh, effects of adrenaline. Now let's see uses. Okay, what are the uses of adrenaline? Okay, there is a mnemonic easier to way easier way to uh, remember is A B C D E. Okay, A is for anaphylaxis. Anaphylactic shock. Okay, in anaphylactic shock, what happens is that the adrenaline will stimulate beta 1 receptor, causing increase in heart rate and force of contraction. Uh, by uh, via alpha 1 receptor, it causes vasoconstriction, causing increase in the blood pressure and decreasing in uh, decrease in laryngeal edema. Okay, by acting on the beta 2 receptor, it will cause bronchodilatation and 
decrease the release of chemical mediators from mast cell okay and it is for and furthermore it is a physiological antagonist of histamine okay it will reverse everything that happens in an anaphylactic shock okay the second is bronchial asthma mainly in acute severe asthma okay the third one is cardiac arrest or during cardiopulmonary resuscitation we usually give one to ten thousand adrenaline iv okay intravenously during cardiac arrest okay the three th fourth one d is duration of action okay duration of action it prolongs the duration of action of local anesthetic agent okay it probably prolongs the duration of action and it also decreases the required dose of la okay the third one is epistax uh, sorry the fifth one is epistaxis control epistaxis control okay it acts as a local hemostatic agent okay it can be also be used uh, to control the bleeding after uh, dental extractions okay so these are the uses of adrenaline okay next we'll discuss about the uh, uh, adverse effect and contraindications of adrenaline okay now the adverse effect of adrenaline okay this adverse effect are generally when the action on the level of action increases okay uh, on heart it causes tachycardia palpitations arrhythmias and increase in blood pressure okay if you remember the action then it is very easier to remember the adverse effect okay on central nervous system it causes headache restlessness okay tremor headache restlessness we already did this okay it can cause cerebral bleed in higher doses okay uh, in higher concentration it can cause acute pulmonary edema okay yeah, it is due to the shift of blood from systemic to pulmonary circulation okay so what are the contraindications of adrenaline okay some of the cvs are cardiovascular system disorders like hypertension angina congestive cardiac failure and arrhythmias okay you cannot give in hypertension because adrenaline will increase the blood pressure in angina there is already uh, uh, uh if you give adrenaline the oxygen demand will further increase as aggravating angina and maybe even precipitating myocardial infarction okay patient using beta blockers okay if you give adrenaline to patient using beta blockers then what happens that alpha mediated action will predominate causing hypertensive crisis and even cerebral hemorrhage okay okay uh, there is something called epinephrine reversal okay epinephrine reversal okay it is use of uh, alpha blocker to relieve re or reverse hypertension to hypotension in patient receiving too much epinephrine okay suppose you give a patient too much epinephrine okay uh, then what happens is that at higher doses it causes alpha mediated action that is severe vasoconstriction leading to hypertension so you give alpha blocker to reverse this hypertension and make the patient's pp fall down okay uh, before i conclude adrenaline there is something called vasomotor reversal of del okay okay let me write it vaso motor reversal of del okay what happens what this vasomotor uh, reversal of del is that if you give uh, injection adrenaline iv okay if you give uh, inject okay i'll draw it in a graph first okay L suppose this was your normal resting blood pressure okay these are alpha one beta one if you give adrenaline okay at this point if you give a d r or epinephrine okay what happens is that the curve the blood pressure curve it moves upward okay and then this initial rise first this initial rise in bp is due to alpha 1 mediated action on the blood vessels okay 
and beta 1 mediated action on the, on the heart okay later on what happens is that beta 2 mediated vasodilation will occur mainly in the skeletal muscle okay so blood will be diverted there and it will cause decrease in blood pressure okay this is due to beta 2 mediated action okay uh, okay and uh, after this okay if uh, if you give alpha blocker okay uh, uh, let's suppose then uh, after the action of epinephrine is over your blood pressure comes to the normal range okay this is the normal range then you give at this point alpha blocker okay and after some time you give adrenaline that what happens is that since the alpha receptor is already blocked only beta 2 or beta receptor mediated action will occur thus decreasing the blood pressure okay this is only beta 2 mediated action and it will cause only fall in bp not this rise and fall phenomenon okay not this rise and fall phenomenon just downfall okay so this is uh, about the vasomotor reversal of tail next we'll discuss about noradrenaline next is noradrenaline okay noradrenaline is an alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta 1 agonist remember if someone asks you what is the difference between adrenaline and noradrenaline the nor part is for beta 2 okay the adrenaline does not act on uh, sorry the noradrenaline does not act on beta 2 receptor while is adrenaline it does okay so by acting on beta 1 receptor it causes direct cardiac stimulation thus causes increase in heart rate force of contraction uh, and increase in conduction velocity okay by acting on alpha receptor alpha 1 receptor it uh, it causes it causes uh, it const constricts all the blood vessels okay including those with uh, those in the skin mucous membrane array uh, kidney mesenteric pulmonary and skeletal blood vessels okay this results in increase in systolic bp diastolic bp thus causing increase in pulse pressure okay and this can lead to reflex bradycardia okay remember that whenever we give noradrenaline we don't give it as iv bolus okay we give it as iv infusion okay but what happens okay if someone mistake mistakenly gives iv noradrenaline then necrosis and sloughing of the tissue at the site of injection will occur so do not give iv bolus no, say no to iv bolus okay noradrenaline can be used to increase bp in hypotensive patients but remember that they may decrease blood flow to vital organs by causing widespread vasoconstriction okay uh, next we'll discuss about isoprenaline or isoproteinolol okay so let me write it isoprenaline pre na then isoprenaline okay or isoproteinolol okay beta 2 equals to beta 1 okay it has both equally beta 1 and beta 2 action and it is, it is uh, like let's say no to alpha receptor uh, drug okay it does not have action on alpha receptors okay it is a powerful cardiac stimulant and it can dilate renal skeletal and mesenteric blood vessels okay yeah, okay due to uh, its actions what happens is that the sister uh, although the systolic bp is minimally changed the diastolic bp and mean arterial pressures are decreased okay the use is use of isoprenaline is to increase the heart rate in heart blocks heart blocks okay i think this was all about the directly acting adrenergic receptor agonist now next we'll discuss about the those drugs that acted indirectly okay then after that we'll discuss about something about uh, dopamine okay okay next we'll discuss about the indirectly acting agents okay 
there are two types of indirectly acting agents okay first are first one are releasers okay they release the noradrenaline from adrenergic nerve endings okay the second one are reuptake inhibitors they prevent the reuptake of noradrenaline from the synaptic cleft okay among the releasers okay let's uh, let, let's first discuss about the releaser drugs okay releasers okay so the releaser drugs are uh, important one are amphetamines feta means tyramine okay amphetamine tyramine and okay some books have also kept kept okay epihedrin epihedrin among these okay let's discuss, discuss something about these drugs okay <clears throat> amphetamine it is used in narcolepsy and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or adsd uh, it can stimulate the central nervous system and it is also a cardiac stimulant but on chronic use it causes fatigue and depression okay if someone comes into the emergency department with possible amphetamine overdose then what you do is you provide you acidify the person's urine okay for example you can use uh, vitamin c which will promote the excretion of amphetamine which is a basic drug okay you provide sedatives to control the cns symptoms and you provide sodium nitroprusside to control the hypertension okay the next one agent is tyramine okay it is not a drug but a agent that is found in red wine and cheese okay this tyramine it inhibits monoamine oxidase a enzyme okay thus increasing the bioavailability of monoamines that are epinephrine nor epinephrine serotonin okay thus causing hypertensive crisis <coughs> uh, remember there are two types of monoamine oxidase enzymes and uh, monoamine oxidase sorry monoamine oxidase a and bono amine oxidase b remember a is for anywhere anywhere but mainly in the liver b is for brain okay this is how we remember okay the a it uh, the mono amine oxidase type a it metabolizes norepinephrine serotonin and tyramine uh, this mono amine oxidase b it metabolizes dopamine okay <coughs> uh and to okay yeah, this is called uh, what i previously said about tyramine this is called cheese reaction okay persons on uh person uh, uh okay uh person if they take red wine and cheese and they are on uh monoamine okay okay I'll, i think i'll discuss about cheese reaction in another video i got a bit confused right now okay so the second one are rea uh, second one way second one was reuptake forgive my english i am still learning reuptake inhibitors okay these are cocaine and tricyclic anti depressants okay uh, next we'll uh, see about epihedrin okay that drug epihedrin okay uh about epihedrin it is a alpha and beta agonist with noradrenaline releasing property okay it has both alpha and beta agonistic action at it increases so alpha beta agonist and noradrenaline release okay so alpha 1 mediated action are vasoconstriction nasal decongestant and mitriatic action on the eye beta 1 cardiac stimulation beta 2 bronchodilation If for the word it also causes cns stimulation and urinary retention okay it is a drug of choice okay it is the drug of choice in hypotension due to okay you guessed it right i think due to spinal anesthesia anesthesia okay lastly we'll discuss about dopamine Uh, and that will 
hopefully conclude the adrenergic agonist okay okay next we'll discuss about dopamine okay dopamine is an alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and d1 agonist with noradrenaline releasing property okay the actions of dopamine they depend upon the dose okay if we give dopamine in low dose that is less than 2 mcg per kg per minute okay then beta uh, sorry not beta d1 receptor action will predominate okay that is dilatation of renal mesenteric and coronary blood vessel okay thus increasing glomerular filtration rate and increasing urine output okay this low dose is called renal dose of dopamine okay the moderate dose that is 2 to 5 mcg per kg per minute the action is generally beta uh, beta predominant okay acting on the beta 1 receptor on the heart it causes increase in cardiac output increase in contractility but the tachycardia it is not that prominent okay remember also with dobutamine the tachycardia isn't that uh, predominant okay uh, yes both dopamine and dobutamine okay uh, and on higher dose okay this on high dose of more than 10 mcg per kg per minute the action is mainly on the vascular alpha 1 receptors that is generalized vasoconstriction okay the, this increases the afterload decreases the renal and mesenteric blood supply and also blood supply to the other vitals vital organs okay so the uses of dopamine okay so the uses of dopamine the uses of dopamine are cardiogenic shock and septic shock okay so what happens is that in cardiogenic shock and septic shock it increases bp okay it dilates the renal coronary and mesenteric blood vessels and improves perfusion to vital organs okay it is also used in uh, severe congestive cardiac failure and with renal impairment okay it also stimulates stimulates the heart increasing cardiac output and contractility and also provides the kidney with all important blood okay so, so the side effects of dopamine are nausea vomiting headache okay it can is in cause tachycardia hypertension arrhythmias angina in higher doses okay lastly something about phenol dopam okay phenol dopam uh, is it is a d1 receptor agonist it is used in hypertensive emergencies okay uh, it's d1 agonistic action causes peripheral vasodilation that's why it is used okay i think this was all about adrenergic agonist next we'll discuss about adrenergic receptor antagonist okay the alpha blockers and the beta blockers